great to come back again this week. Hope you had a good week. Um, when I was celebrating Mass this week, one of the uh, scripture passages kind of struck me, and I thought it would be a good topic to discuss during our weekly chat. Um, and it was from uh, one of St. Paul's letters to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians. It's that very beautiful piece that we're all so familiar with where he talks about the virtue of love, uh, its patience, its kind, and then ends with the three theological virtues, faith, hope, and love. And usually we stop the reading there. That's the part we're most familiar with. And we aren't as familiar with what continues through into chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians. And as you continue after the, the part that we're most familiar with, um, he goes on to say some profound stuff that I think is useful for us to reflect upon. He says, when I was a child, I used to talk as a child, think as a child, reason as a child. When I became a man, I put aside childish things. In thinking about this, I began to wonder if we truly understand what the word maturity is all about. You know, if you go into the dictionary, you don't find out too much because it's very vague. It says the state, fact, or period of being mature. Well, that says nothing. It equates it with adulthood, full growth, majority, coming of age. Merriam-Webster points out that it's the quality or state of being mature, full development. And the free dictionary speaks of pretty much the same. So if somebody is looking to define maturity so that they could understand more about what that is, the dictionary really wouldn't be much help. Um, and so it's one of those kind of vague notions that's out there. You know, um, we'll say to somebody, you're being immature, um, or grow up and act your age. Um, we'll th throw things out like that. But what, are, what do we really mean by the word mature? And I think sometimes we wrongly think that just because we're aging and we're becoming older that we're, we're maturing in all levels of our life. Well, we may be maturing age-wise, but what about emotionally? What about spiritually? What about those greater dimensions of life? You know, St. Paul um, very accurately said, I put aside childish ways. So. He's very clearly pointing to maturity as an active choice, active choice. So we have to decide to embark upon this journey of maturity. Well, to try to understand this a little bit more, um, I thought it would be interesting to look at the reverse. Let's look at immaturity. Let's look at St. Paul's first part of that, where he talks about being a child, reasoning like a child, thinking like a child, we can act acting like a child. Now, before we go into that a little bit more, uh, Jesus makes it a point to say that we have to be like little children. When he uses that metaphor, he's really talking about the innocence of a child, the playfulness of a child. He's not telling us to reason like a child or to take on the uh, total behaviors of a child. He's not acting us, asking us to feel like a child. He's asking us to go back to that time of innocence. So, you know, if we separate that piece out, because that's a positive, what is this business that uh, St. Paul is referring to? Well, you know, if we look at children and how they reason through things, how they handle life, we see some behaviors that kind of surface. You know, children are great for displaying tantrums. You know, the power struggle. Who's going to win? You know, is it going to be mom and dad or am I going to get the cookie? And so uh, these temper tantrums are a part of what we associate with childish behavior. Um, and they can be very difficult to negotiate at times. If a child is extremely stubborn, these tantrums are something that takes some skill to negotiate and work with. Children are great for not sharing. This is mine. You can't have it, and that's yours. But you cannot have mine. I'm going to take mine into the other room and keep it for me because it's mine. Children have 
a struggle with self-control, which will often show itself in like over-the-top silliness. You know, they'll just all of a sudden start clowning around um, or displaying other affect um, that would require more restraint. Children haven't learned that ability to control their behaviors. And so you see these kind of uh, swings of mood and, and, and affect at times. Um, children can be very impatient. They have an inability to accept or tolerate delay. You know, if they can't have it, then you see a reaction. So they get very fidgety, they're very impatient, they have to be engaged and we have to keep them engaged. And so impatience is something we see in children. Children have a difficulty sometimes handling emotion. They can become overly weepy overly sensitive. You know, kids can cry at the drop of a hat um, over something that's said or done, something that we adults look at and say, it's no big deal to the child, it's huge. Um, because emotions are just beginning to develop and they can become overwhelming. Children sometimes can be seen hitting others. You know, they act out their aggression and their, their anger um, by sometimes lashing out violently at, at their friends or their, or their siblings or whomever happens to be around. They have a tough time uh, handling being overwhelmed, frustrated or angry. And so we see them acting out in that regard too. Children have a tendency to whine. And so I want what I want and I'm gonna whine until I get it. And, and, and this is a very typical behavior that we see in kids. Um, and it's something that's clearly associated with that developmental part of life of being a child. Children will also have no problem lying. You know, if they want to get something, they will figure out a way to make that happen. And if they want to avoid getting into trouble, they're going to be adamant that they did not do what we know they did. Um, they lie sometimes to avert responsibility. They either do it because they lack confidence, they can't focus, they're impulsive. Um, and so this leads into this whole business of, of trying to work our way through something by just simply avoiding the truth. Children sometimes have a problem with listening. We can tell them to do something, but their focus may be somewhere else. They might be easily distracted. Uh, they didn't comprehend what was being said, so therefore they really didn't listen to it. They didn't get it. Um, or because they're receiving criticism and they don't want to be criticized, so they're going to block it out. Um, or they don't want to be told what to do. And so we get into this, again, defiance, you know, my will versus your will uh, type of a thing. So if you look at that, you know, if you want to say that's, that's childish behavior, um, then we can kind of get an image of what immaturity is about. You know, power struggles, who's going to win, tantrums, mine, yours, having an inability to say ours, self-control, um, being impatient, intolerant, not handling emotions well, aggression, violence, whining, lying, not listening, and I mean not listening even to the needs of others. Well, I see that in a lot of adults, especially as we go about this journey we are going about right now in our world, in our society, in a church, in our wherever. All that plays out every day right before us by people who claim to be mature adults. I see it in myself. I can point to times recently where many of those things that I just laid out in the realm of immaturity are things that I've done. And so where is the check and balance here in our lives? You know, where is the choice, as St. Paul says, to put those things aside? Where is the choice to do it differently? Where is the choice to live differently so that we're not trying to deal with these big problems like children, but we deal with them with focused, adult, mature minds. Well, we can't do that unless we know what maturity, first of all, looks like, and we can't do it unless we've decided to take that path and put that into our lives. If I'm going to go from point A to point B in my developmental life, huh, whether it's spiritually, emotionally, whatever, even physically, 
if I'm going to move, I have to choose to do that. And I have to take specific steps to get that way. So for example, if I have a problem with impatience, I'm not going to just go on being impatient if I really want to be patient. I'm going to do what I need to do to work on that problem that I'm encountering, okay? So we have to make a choice, that's number one. Uh, and then I think we have to have a place to go to define maturity, to define it. The world isn't gonna do that. The internet isn't gonna do that. The dictionary's not gonna do that. But our faith can do that. St. Paul figured it out, you know, if you read the rest of that letter, the, the first part there where he talks about love, isn't he really talking about becoming mature? He's pointing out all the things that can bring us away from a true sense of love, a sense of God, and trying to orientate us on how we ought to be doing this. And he outlines it very well there. Uh, our faith does that too. We have the gospel. We have the Beatitudes. We have this thing about examination of conscience. Ah, conscience. Developing a sense of responsibility in my life, of moral integrity in relationship with God, the church, my brothers and sisters. There's a good place to start for developing this attitude of maturity. We have the teaching on sin. We know the weakness that's built into human nature. And we also have the virtues. Now, between the gospel, the Beatitudes, an examination of conscience, development of conscience, sin, and an understanding of weakness, we can start getting a pretty good picture of how we need to go from here over to here. You know, so when it comes to interacting with the world, when it comes to dealing with the problems that come along, even in my own life, my own personal problems, if I feel myself being tugged to the more immature response. If I find myself acting out as if I were a child, then it's a good opportunity to figure out how to do that differently and to use uh, these basics of faith to do that as the tools. Now, there's some other ones that kind of link us together as human beings that are across the board and they're called virtues. Virtues, things like justice, fortitude, temperance and prudence. Now, I don't know if you realize this or not, but those four virtues, justice, fortitude, temperance, and prudence, the Catholic Church teaches can be done by anyone. They're not just Christian, they're human. So regardless of what you believe, the virtues are still things that can be pursued. They go across the, the boundaries. Right? So everybody can work for justice. Everybody can become uh, prudent. Everybody can embrace temperance. Anybody can become a person of fortitude. Right? If that is the goal that you want to put into your life. And I would venture to say, if we did things more out of virtue, we would stand a better chance of dealing with the problems that are before us, because they all have something to do with those in one way, shape, form, or another, especially justice. You know, setting relationships right, person to person, not only in my own life, but across the globe. Um, so there's a lot, of, a lot of fruit here for some thought and some prayer, and for looking at ourselves, at our world, at what we see and witness around us, of how adults are behaving, of what is considered acceptable behavior today, which in many cases is very low level functioning, to be honest with you. We need to rise up. We need to bring things to a, a better level. We need to do things differently. We need to engage our brains and our hearts and our spirits to become mature adults. Then you add to those four virtues of justice, fortitude, prudence, and temperance, the other three, the, the big ones, faith, hope, and love. And now you've got a big package of how I can use the, how I can live life differently and more maturely by embracing the road that leads to those things, that makes me a person who is more just, that gives me the courage, the fortitude to endure even when it's difficult to endure, to become a person who is temperate, 
who is somebody who is moderate, who I voluntarily, voluntarily put self-restraint into my life, whether it be for emotions, physically, whatever. And that I'm a person who's prudent, that I have a knowledge of things that ought to be done and a knowledge of things to avoid. If we worked in this framework, I think we would find that we would be more productive. We could stretch, we could change, we could deepen, we could grow, we can listen, we can discover humility, and we will stumble upon a true spirituality that's rooted not in what's best for me, but that flows from my relationship with God, who is ultimately the one that I need to get straight in my life. Because without that working the way it needs to be, I will never find my way to true north. So just something to think about um, this week, this whole business of immaturity versus maturity. Look around at what you see. Maybe you can tweak something in your own life a little bit to adjust how you react to things, even those things that are part of your ordinary everyday life. Maybe through prayer, you can come up with some inspiration of how you can embark upon a journey to better deepen and understand this wonderful person God made you to be. God bless you.